See, that's funny because that's from Top Gun. Feeling lucky today, punk? Have you been watching The Godfather? Yeah, I've been trying to come up with some common ground to expand our friendship. Sue me. King Lear. I happen to like King Lear. And unlike some people I know, Lewis's references don't begin and end with Top Gun. Hey, I love Lewis, and I don't care what you say. I am not leaving my wingman. See, that's funny because that's from Top Gun. He's a wild card, flies by the seat of his pants. I think I can't quote Top Gun. Get the hell out of here. Oh, that was good. Norma, where is he? What? You're kidding. What? I come here when I need to be alone. 44 Magnum? Really? Feeling lucky today, punk? No, I understand. But that me pissing the bed on this case must be really, really fun for you. No, Lewis, it's not. The one thing you and I have in common is we need to win. You sent that email just to screw with me. Lewis, I didn't send the email. Scotty did. She used my computer. I didn't even know. Oh, bullshit. She came running to you, you played in our friendship, and just now you had me go on about it to continue the mockery. Look, I wasn't mocking you. I was trying to keep you from finding out. I thought if you didn't know, no harm would be done. No, you know what? Harm was done. And if you value this friendship at all, you would stay out of it. Because I'm going to the mattresses against Dana Scott. Mattresses? Have you been watching The Godfather? Yeah, I've been trying to come up with some common ground to expand our friendship. Sue me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to see Ava with you? Yep. Yeah, baby. Butch and Sundance are back. Ooh, no go. What do, what, do, what do you mean, no go? I mean, you're not Butch or Sundance. Why not? It's because Butch was the leader, and Sundance was the gunslinger, and I'm both. Okay, but Sundance couldn't swim, and Butch never shot anyone, so that makes you a loser. Better than a frog. I think it's time for some new material. You write Midnight Train to Georgia, you don't just sing it once. And speaking of Butch Cassidy, let's go start a knife fight. Are you saying you were after my job? Of course I wasn't. But who the hell am I kidding? You know, I mean, I'm not Frodo. Once I got that ring of power, we all know what it consumed me. That's what I like about you, Lewis. You may not be self-aware, but if someone holds up a mirror, you are not afraid to look. Thank you, Jessica. But the truth is, Harvey needs Donna more than I do. Well, it was a selfless and noble act. As far as I'm concerned, you may not be Frodo, but you are Samwise Gamgee. Get the f You read Lord of the Rings? Four times. I mean, it is about power. That's funny. I always thought it was about friendship. Who are you? I'm the guy that's gonna win your case against Andrew Malik. Well, that's funny. Cause I already got a guy to do that. You have a guy who says he can, but you should know that just because a guy talks a big game doesn't mean he won't get knocked out in the third round. So why should I believe that you can handle this if my guy can? You seen Rocky IV? Only about 30 times. Well, Malik's Ivan Drago, and my old mentor is Apollo Creed. Let me guess, you're Rocky. I'm Rocky, Clubber Lang, and Apollo all rolled into one. Because Malik took a swing at people I care about. He knocked one out. And nobody fights harder than someone looking for payback. And on top of all of that, I'm the best there is on a bad day. So, are you in? I'm in. I know what the procedure is. I don't think it means what you think it means. Well, as inconceivable as it might be to you, Harvey, I'm actually not going in hostile. What are you talking about? I'm talking about approaching someone to buy their company in order to keep it alive instead of selling it for parts. You're offering someone hugs and rainbows. I'm offering someone the chance to survive and banking that they'll take that chance rather than give up. You don't have the money, do you? No, I don't. But even if I did, I wouldn't use it. Well, welcome to what every person who doesn't have money has ever said. Oh, I get it. You think this is the meeting where you make fun of my idea. No, 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 no. This is the meeting where you realize that my idea is happening whether you like it or not. <sighs> I bet she was pissed. Not as pissed as you're gonna be. What are you talking about? You're on Katrina duty for the next two days. What? I'd rather be on latrine duty. It's not an option. Okay, then I'm going AWOL. Well, let me connect the dots for you, Forrest Gump. Even though Jessica gave in on the strategy, Lewis made it clear he's willing to sacrifice Ava. And you don't trust him to play by the rules. Which is why you're gonna work side by side with her to figure a way out of this jam. And at the same time, make sure she and Lewis don't shaft us. Not bad, Forrest. Okay, if I'm Forrest, then you're Bubba. Shrimp business. Harvey, 
If Ava loses her company, will Darby still back you as managing partner? I didn't ask, but I sure as hell wouldn't. Is there a reason you're not turning around? I like to play a little game with some of my visitors. For example, you use Evian skin cream and sometimes you wear l'air du temps, but not today. Of course I do. I'm just one generation away from poor white trash and I could only dream of getting out, getting anywhere. Getting all the way to the FBI. A census taker tried to test me once. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. You see a lot, doctor, but are you strong enough to point that high-powered perspective? Quid pro quo, All Clarice. right, that's enough. We didn't come here for a quote off. No, you didn't. You came here to get me to give Kevin Slattery more time, and that's never going to happen. Actually, we're here to get you to buy up every piece of debt associated with Slattery Freight and then get you to give him more time. Why would I do that? Why? Because you're the biggest debt holder, and if any of the others makes a claim, it'll trigger a bankruptcy, and you get 50 cents on the dollar five years from tomorrow. How'd it go down? Did you tell him if he puts one of ours in the hospital, we put one of his in the morgue? No, Harvey, I did not quote the untouchables to the man. Should have. You stinking Irish pig. That's really funny. You lying member of a no good. Robert. Oh, I hate to interrupt in the middle of an Untouchables quote fest. Two doors down, they're doing steel magnolias. You fit right in. I'm more of a beaches man myself. I assume you're here to settle. I'm afraid not. I wanted to tell you that my firm has a conflict of interest, so I decided to farm out the case. Well, whose ass are we gonna kick now? Actually, an old classmate of mine. Let me guess. Daniel Hardman. Uh, I thought I was getting exposed. This is a little less important. My merger? Your panic attack. Your compassion. And I didn't have a panic attack. I had a legitimate reason for concern. Really? Why would she ask you to dinner just to fire you? I don't know. A little movie called Goodfellas. Do you see it? Joe Pesci thought he was getting made. He got dead. That's your idea of a legitimate reason? Karen, where's the money, Karen? Go back to your cubicle. Hey, wait a minute. Do you, do you think that I might get an office out of this dinner? A second ago, you thought you were going to get whacked. Now you want an office? Come on, I'm adapting to changing circumstances. Huh. Well, maybe you won't be the worst lawyer in the history of everything. That's not creepy at all. I was just wondering why you changed your hair. Hair's the same as it's always been. You trying to look older? Younger? Whatever it is, it isn't working. Are you finished? Because I'm actually trying to catch up on some billables here. Hey, I just stopped by to give you a little gift for winning the Zane case. A gift? You've never given me a gift after a case. That's not true. Come to think of it, you've never even congratulated me, which means you're actually here because, oh my god, you miss me. I did not miss you. Are you OK? Do you want to come over tonight? We can watch Sleepless in Seattle. Do you want your gift or not? That's it? My gift looks a lot like a folder. It's a case. You and me killing it against Travis Tanner. Just like old times? Just like old times. Well, you had me at hello. You watched Jerry Maguire? Jerry, did you know the human head weighed eight pounds? These are the ABCs of me, baby! Show me the money! <laughs> <laughs> ah. You know, normally I wouldn't want to jinx anything, but I got us something. OK. It's the perfect way to consummate a relationship. So just wait right here. It's in the kitchen. Sure. The hallmark of America is that the little guy gets to see justice done. We are all equals in the eyes of the law. That is why, out of all the countries in the world, I chose to come here. What do you got to say about that, Counselor? I say Atticus Finch makes a good speech here, but this is a fender bender, not a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Vicarious liability applies to discrimination, harassment, and accidents. Employers are responsible for their employees' negligence. Court finds a reasonable suit here. Trial starts tomorrow. Why is that on my desk? Because the LSATs are a week from Saturday. Great, go away. I'm busy. There are only four tests a year, which means if you miss this one, you're going to have to wait another three months. I can do math too, Goodwill Hunting. When did I say I was ready to retake the LSATs? I thought that after our talk, you... Nothing about our talk said I'm interested in bombing the test again. You're not going to bomb it again. How do you know? Because the first time you took it, you were missing one essential ingredient. Me. I'm not interested. <clears throat> If I let you help me, will you leave me alone? Mm -hmm. OK. I'll see you later. Get excited. There's a harsh reality I need to inform you of. And it's a bitter pill to swallow. But the truth is, a mistake was made, a fatal mistake. And as much as I hate to admit it, our time together is done. No more work. No more laughter. <laughs> Remember? No more mentorship and um, 
no more anything. You see, I reached too high and I fell, and my punishment is the end of my tenure as head of the associates. So, I would like to leave you with the immortal sentiment of Robin Williams. There have been other associates before you. They believed they were destined for great things, just like you, if you just listen. You can hear them whisper their legacy to you. Carpe diem. Seize the day, people. Make your legal lives extraordinary. Oh, Captain, my Captain. One thing about everyone being gone, we got the run of the place. I never knew what the ceiling looked like in here. It's like the breakfast club. Do you ever not quote a movie? No, you got a problem with that. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You're an idiot. Nothing like prison blue to make you realize the clothes don't make the man, huh? Warden Clark? Me? <laughs> no. Who told you you were going to meet the warden? Uh, no one. I, I just thought that this was going to be like a prison movie. Put your trust in the Lord, but your ass belongs to me type shit. You know Shawshank. Of course, you know Shawshank. You work in a prison. No, brother, I know Shawshank because it's the greatest movie ever made. Here. What's this? Your psychological evaluation. Why do I need a psychological evaluation? Because the federal penitentiary system says you do. Now, when I get back, if there's a hole in the mirror covered by a Rita Hayworth poster, I will not be happy. How could you do that? Scotty, you're acting like I killed someone. I didn't. You paid so that I could sleep with you and be here at the same time. Do you know what that makes me? Lucky? That's not funny. No, I didn't mean it to be. I paid because I want you to stay. I did it as a romantic gesture. Yeah, well, Pretty Woman may have been a romantic movie, but Julia Roberts was still a hooker. Now you come up with the movie reference? Harvey, can you imagine how that makes me feel to find that out? No, no, he can't. He can. I'm not. You are. Harvey. Listen, Lewis is devious, confident, and intelligent. You forgot ugly, lazy, and disrespectful. Look, now is not the time to quote The Breakfast Club. Oh, you mess with the bull, you get the horn. Stop it. This trial is no joke. Jessica is going against Muhammad Ali. She better be able to beat Joe Frazier. Lewis is no Joe Frazier. OK, I get it. You want me to help Lewis think outside the box. Exactly. Now, how would you come after me? Well, first of all, Don't I... tell me, tell Lewis, because you and I are not discussing this trial during this trial. I need to find out everything I can about the former DA's cases. OK. Gone with the Wind? No. Citizen Kane? No. Dirty Dancing? Nobody that's big I in the corner. I can't believe you. I'm helping Come on, you. Let's go. Here, check this out. Whoa, no one's thought to come at it this way. Mike, this is outstanding. I actually got the idea from a movie. Moneyball. I thought you hated sports. Moneyball isn't about sports. It's about math. Exactly. One problem. It's outside the scope. What if it weren't? What if I could fly? Well, I can't help you with that, but if we want to get it in the scope, we just have to get the other side to put it there for us. See the money won't stay.